Kirk away. And uh, Kirk leaves his release. Copy. Getting a lot of training done right now. And uh, Kirk Lees is at the end of its tether. Copy. Uh, <laughs> zero, I know zero the feeling. Reps. Deck Atalanta's in the water, Swapping over to dive. Do it? Dive, yep. yes. Please. And Van Deck, do you copy? Atalanta's in the water. Copy that. Affirmative. Why aren't we getting her tracking? There we go. Spicy. Audio slate, this is an audio slate for dive hotel 1956. UTC time is 192500. Go ahead, Ridge. Can we hold position here, Robert? Mark. Yep. Bridge, uh, we can hold position. Thank you. Some muzzles started.
You were on TV. Never mind. Okay, good morning, everyone. How's everybody feeling this morning? <laughs> awesome. Muted, but awesome. <laughs> awesome. Front row, how's everybody feeling? Yay! <laughs> Nonverbal. <laughs> <I'm tired. laughs> Nonverbal. Okay, well, we're at four or five meters. Four or five, okay, a little bit. Oh, when our team is ready, I would love to do our introductions. And your least favorite food. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a professor at University of Rhode Island and director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. My research is on submarine volcanoes and marine geology. Um, and um, my least favorite food and, uh, is fennel. Copy that, five zero. Taking fennel. It from fennel. fennel. I don't, I really don't like fennel. It's like a vegetable with a licorice flavor. <laughs> Not oh. feeling it. Oh, look, a fish. Oh. Do you like the fennel seeds? Fennel. Like lasagna sauce? Uh, eh, yeah. can live without it. Mm -hmm. I get that. About um, cilantro. I do like cilantro. So you're not you're not one of the soap people. No, there yeah, there's some <laughs> like <laughs> genetic difference that makes you makes it taste like soap. No, I love cilantro. Ah. Are you a soap person? I'm I'm sort of middle of the road. I'm okay with cilantro, but huh. I don't I don't like loaded up with cilantro. Oh. Hey Robert, did we do did you do uh, the I'm yeah, not getting I'm, the I'm doing that now. We're a little bit light but not very much. Perfect. We're pretty neutrally. I tried to get it as All right, going down. Uh, I'm not getting a readout on my side here on the, for the winch. I'll just reset it. I have a friend back home who just does Sometimes like soups of cilantro. Refresh like a tea uh -huh. type cilantro of thing. Soup. All cilantro. cilantro soup. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, top left. All right, who, who was saying that? Who's What's your name? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds, two seconds. That? I'll, I'll just turn off the <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Paola Santiago. I am a marine biologist from Sociedad Ambiente Marina back in Puerto Rico. And my least, I am today's data logger. And my least favorite food, I would have to say, it's called morcilla in Spanish. It's like, um, it's like a, like a meat a field with blood. Uh, blood uh, sausage what? kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that oh. thing. Gosh. I don't like that. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. I haven't tried it, but I don't know. <laughs> blood. Just feel a little squeamish. Um, hi everyone. I'm Jules. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, I am a scientist on the Nautilus, and. Um, my least favorite food, I don't know, I don't like Brussels sprouts, I guess. Oh, what? I yeah. like Brussels sprouts. You might not have had them 
Whoa. Like a good way. You haven't had my Brussels sprouts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like roasted Brussels sprouts? Yeah, no, I've I've had them and I'm just not a fan. You're not loving it? All right. Not loving it. That's fine. Hey. Honey nut Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels sprouts. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, okay. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Annie Halleck. Um, I'm eight to 12 SCF, Science Communication Fellow, my first year sailing on a Nautilus um, from Pong Pong, American Samoa. And, and uh, my least oh. favorite food. Gigi had me scared there with you. I don't like I it. I think it'd be uh, pickles. What? Oh, just all pickles. Oh, There's a lot of variety. Yeah, not just the, like the jar. The jar. You pickles? need it from the jar. Yeah, yeah. sure. That, yeah, I that like just. Yeah, I mean, props to those who do. I just I, mean, I couldn't. I strong do it. opposition <laughs> to this. You know what? We accepted your Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah. We gotta just that's accept true. Her, her pickles. You're right. You're right. You did come around to. You did. Maybe if we pick up some Brussels sprouts, oh both of you gosh. can Absolutely be the least happy not. people on the Why would you which, ruin a good thing? Which I have done, oh. by the way. I have. You what? Have? what? You I have? Pick, I pickle all kinds of stuff. Wow. Got our wow. fermentation expert. I need over. a make workshop. My own, make my own kimchi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely need a workshop. Okay, front row, let's go when you're ready. Come on. Let's go, go Samantha. It's Hi, Samantha Wishnick, uh, <laughs> navigator for uh, this cruise. I'm also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Uh, I'm pretty open to most food, at least once or twice, um, but I have not enjoyed frog. <laughs> oh, frog? Frog yeah. legs? In frog, frog? Frog? Whole frog. Whole frog? <laughs> what? Yeah. Really I did not have frog. that one twice. Oh, okay. I didn't know people could that, eat frogs. That's so unexpected. Yeah. It's whole fried frog. A whole fried frog. <laughs> what did it taste like? Chicken? Yeah, this was in Cambodia. Uh, it tasted kind of like chicken. It was kind of dark. But it still looks we like a eating. frog <laughs> is the problem. Yeah, that's the, that was the thing. I think it's great that people are open to eating, you know, things that are pretty abundant, right? Like. Right. Yeah. True. But that was one I couldn't get over. Crickets are okay. I haven't had fruit bat. Nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's good. It's yeah, good. Yeah. I think eating bats is probably not a great uh, idea. I guess like sauce, what we find it, disgusting it's, 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 just it's has to do with like okay. what we've been like in the crazy right. yeah. like and people in, to people find in France disgusting. find peanut butter disgusting. Yeah. Also, yeah. frogs are delicious. Oh wow! Yeah, frog legs. And I love peanut butter. Yeah. yeah. So, and escargot. Yeah, it's just what we're oh, raised with. Escargot. But, yeah, like people in the U.S. are taught that like bugs are disgusting and you yeah. shouldn't eat them. But, but we should totally be eating bugs. But like we should totally be eating yeah. bugs. For real protein. Yeah. Extra okay. protein. We've really gone down a rabbit hole, Robert. <laughs> 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 no, his least favorite food is the <laughs> It's only odd depending on where you are. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. Well, yeah, but true. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I think you're not on SPL, Robert. Oh, he's not been here the whole time. Nothing. Wow. All that nothing. I don't think I'm a fan of the bugs or the <laughs> internal <laughs> organs or any oddball things like that. And who are you? <laughs> we'll just restart Water. the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I kind of feel like if you took any of those things and put it in a taco, that... Robert Robert probably well, like it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, It'll well, be... I have a friend who tries to get me to eat those sort of things in a taco and said they're delicious. <laughs> and I, I don't buy it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. By the way, I asked for burgers yesterday. Yeah, you did. We you had did. burgers so for dinner. Burgers. So, so where's the tacos? Yeah, tacos <laughs> have been requested. Okay. Right. I've put in the request. All right. I, had a, I had a pork burger first, first time yesterday. Pork chop burger. Oh. Really? <laughs> Which I thought was a chicken burger, but it turned out to be a pork chop. Yeah. There you go. Schnitzel. Surprised me very good. Schnitzel. So who are you, TJ? 
question. <laughs> and your <laughs> least favorite food. That was deep. Uh, uh, century eggs. Um, oh, are uh, those are really old eggs? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I had them once, and that was about it. Um, yeah, I'm uh, TJ Scanlon, Atlanta pilot um, on here uh, from the southwest of Ireland, the Dingle Peninsula. Yeah, century eggs would be uh, on that list. Um, that is... All other food, I pretty much like them. What is a century egg? Century eggs are eggs that are stored in a oh, high yeah. phosphorus, I think, um, a high pH environment, buried in the ground. Uh, yeah, I believe traditionally it was buried in manure. And oh. uh, they go really, really black. Oh. And yeah, they have uh, an acquired, like acquired taste. <laughs> I've always wanted to try one. Yeah. I, I was just yeah. in, uh, there was in this geothermal area in, um, in the Azores in Portugal, and there was this whole region that specializes in a stew that's cooked in the like geothermal pits, mm -hmm. and it has that really wow. high sulfur huh. like taste. It's really good, yeah. but yeah. it's also acquired, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, and uh, the, the I don't know the correct name from the the eggs with the chicks that are semi-developed. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, balut. Balut. Yeah, balut. That's right. yeah. yeah balut. I was given that a, a presented that one time at a meal and. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the quiet yeah, taste. No. <laughs> that makes me a little nervous. Dave. Hi, Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer on this uh, expedition and sitting in the video seat today, uh, making things work, uh, hopefully, and uh, making the cameras look good. Uh, food. Uh, there are many things. Uh, <laughs> that uh, a lot of you have already gone over. Uh, internal organs, uh, bugs, uh, eggs in general. Um, but uh, top of the list, I think, avocado. Oh. What? Uh, I, I could not live really? without avocado. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nope. nope, can't can't eat it. That is a Text very that, wow. ecologically conscious position since avocados yeah. take a lot of water yeah. to grow. Well, there, I'm doing my part to save the planet, but uh, really, when it comes down to it, texture issues. Mm. What about uh, guacamole? No. No. None, like wow. nothing with oh, avocado. Oh, any guacamole you, that you can make that's not with avocado. Oh. <laughs> so okay. like the, uh, the salsa part of it, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I can, I'm down with that. But the uh, the avocado part of it, no, thank you. Green, slimy, no, just no. <laughs> and like eggs uh, in any form other than hidden as much as possible. Eggs uh, hidden. scrambled hard with lots of extra stuff in it so you can't really tell they're eggs, just enough egg to hold it together. Mm. Uh, or an omelet that's uh, completely mixed so that there's no separate yolk or white, uh, and lots of things in it. Mm. Cheese, meat, that kind okay. of stuff. So there you go. You asked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My grandparents had an avocado tree that had the best avocados ever. The bacon avocados. You don't see them in the store because they don't travel well. Oh, bacon avocado? Yeah, it has a thin, has a thin kind of. You gotta peel it off. So when you oh. have like a BLAT, you just need to put yeah you tomato know, and yeah, it's very lettuce on it, and very, then that's it. Very <laughs> creamy, nice avocado. Does it yeah. taste like bacon? They say it does. I don't know. Huh. It's I guess it's kind of fatty, right? Yeah. This is good. One of my friends uh, who manages an abalone farm does all the collecting for of giant kelp. This is a related story. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. sound like it, but c collects giant kelp to feed the abalones. Um, well, they're switching to different kelp now, but um, he invented a uh, algae LT, so smoked giant kelp that then gets fried up, and it tastes like bacon, and that uh -huh. goes on your BLT instead uh -huh. of bacon, and it's so good. Like sweet, salty, smoky. Huh. Yeah. We're having a little trouble with giant kelp right now in California, but well, they're they're so cultivating it at Altice, where our really? our marine facility is. Yeah, and they're looking at different different wow varieties of kelp to find ones that oh you know, seaweed, not giant kelp, because macrocystis is really hard to uh, <coughs> grow in controlled environments. Yeah, can be. Uh, but that's interesting. Maybe that's one of the ones are well, sugar yeah. kelp is. Well, they're looking at ones that don't sugar take kelp. a lot of light, so you can. Yeah. You can, uh, you know, grow them in the... Under wharfs and inside. Yeah. yeah. And they have a high nutritional value. I don't know.
Okay. Um, well, thank you, team. Uh, shout out to everybody tuning in. Um, Adam, what is our uh, dive objective? Oh, uh, this is gonna be an awesome dive. Uh, we're at a. We've moved to another seamount, and again, a flat top seamount. And we're gonna be on the huh. northwest corner of this seamount, which looks like a ancient rift zone for the volcano. So volcanoes, when they get large enough, they'll develop, they'll kind of crack in on certain areas where all the volcanism will be focused. And this looks like one of those areas. We have a, uh, a steep wall that we're gonna climb, which is pretty exciting for because it's usually an area where you get a lot of flow and a lot of coral and sponges. And then geologically, we want to sample along there, but we're mostly exploring uh, to characterize this seamount that's never been visited before. Oh. Is it still there, TJ? Oh, chat. So our yeah. expected dive duration is about 18 hours, correct? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, but that's the, the best guess at this point. Okay, and ma expected max depth is 24, 20 meters. Yeah, and I think we climb to about 1,800 or 1,600 meters. Any rock objectives? <laughs> yeah, the problem is you don't... Always. Yeah, we would love to get uh, kind of fresh, unaltered basalts, but we won't know till we get them back because everything presumably will be covered with iron manganese crust, so I can't see the, the real rock. What do you mean by fresh, unaltered um, basalts? What does that look so like? So as close to their state as when they came out of the ground, mm -hmm. but over time, as they interact with seawater, um, some of the crystals and the rock itself can be changed chemically by that interaction. And so you lose some of that original signal that was present in the rock when it first formed. We use the chemistry of the rock to link it back to the material it formed from, the depth that it sat in the crust, you know, all sorts of interesting chemical and physical processes could be deduced from just what the chemistry of the rock is. I know we did some rock sampling. Um, how did that go? What did you, we find? Rock cutting? The yeah, rock cutting? Yeah, yeah. Rock cutting. Yeah, so we had a big crew out uh, helping cut open rocks to see what was inside. A lot of people got a chance to do that. Everyone was first of all safe, wearing the right. proper safety yep. gear, <laughs> and successful in cutting the rocks open. So now that they've been cut open, we'll describe them. We'll describe the rock type, maybe the state of alteration, how much crust is on it, what sort of mineral phases are present, and then they'll get sent to the archive. Awesome. Bala, did, did did you get a chance to do some sampling in the wet lab? In the wet lab? Yeah. yeah really how did that go? So it was great. We were able to get a lot of sub samples. And I think the coolest thing we, we saw was the whalebone. We were able to that retrieve that from last dive. Yeah, there's a bunch. yeah so it was the, yeah, the no part of a skull of a beaked whale and uh, had been totally encrusted with iron and manganese but you could still see some of the structure it looks like a looks like a beak pretty much but with some protrusions at the non pointy end where it was kind of connected to the rest of the whale skeleton and that was the only one that was found on that dive yeah yeah cool that's okay cool. Yeah, although i was, I was looking for more i like it be cool it's pretty, <laughs> you got pretty to see cool. it too jules yeah, yeah. Heavier than you'd expect. Hey, if we, uh, let's see, I think I have a picture of it. Dave, can you turn on the little camera here?
There you go. Oh, that's not in focus. <laughs> is that in focus? Mm, maybe yeah, zoom not. in. Um, I can't zoom on that camera, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, no. I, yeah. There it is. There we go. Cool. How right. old do we think it is, Adam? How old? Uh, well, to have, I, I won't even guess, but, you know, at least a thousand years old, I would say, to have what? developed the, no. the no. iron manganese crust on it. No. Whoa. Um, and we, if we knew how thick it was, we could make a kind of qualitative estimate, but uh, <laughs> we don't know how thick it is. There, there were some spots where you could see through the uh, crust, right? Like to more of the underlying material, but uh, I don't know how thick it was. So we'll say 100 to 1,000. So if it was wow. fossilized, can we still carbon date it? Uh, potentially. No, that would be really tough because it would be, if it was fossilized, no, you couldn't. Because that would mean that it had remineralized, so yeah. the original right. okay. carbon would be... Mm. We'll be gone. We have a question. I think this is for our pilots. How is um, Atalanta and Hercules doing today? Were there any, well, I could assume, um, improvements, changes to our ROVs? Uh, we had to change out the main tether from, or not the main tether, the tether from Atalanta to Hercules. So we had a fault in it yesterday. Right. Well, that was the big work. There's a slight hydraulic adjustment that was made. And mm -hmm. I think that helped things. Uh, that's about that, that. Yeah, that only took us all night. That was <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> mechanical, electrical. And <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of prayer. Aft inverter failed. Is there Still troubleshooting that. that oh. Yeah. Can you slow down a small bit. Uh, thank you. And for everyone tuning in, if you have any questions, please send them in the chat. Our team uh, is happy to oh. answer any oh, questions you may have. And don't forget to check out nautiluslive.org for our highlights. If you are just tuning in and you have missed our previous dives, our team posted amazing highlights um, from those dives. So we will, we will be posting more highlights in the week to come. Also, check out links. Uh, this region is being um, has been nominated to potentially become a national marine sanctuary. So. Um, all the data and the information that we are collecting yeah. um, informs that process. Not only that, your questions and your comments are very important. So please check it out. Um, public comments are accepted at this time. Right. And this is from chat. The laser spectrometer is not used on this dive, correct? Yeah, no. Okay. Thank you. Slow down. Yeah, no, just leave yours alone. I'm just, I'm just All trying right. to. Yeah, we're Push. fighting each other here. Yeah, yeah. the spectrometer so only goes up, up to well, 1,500 meters, and oh. this dive is way deeper. Yeah, right, so right. Get to okay, thank you. You Take leave it. it there, and I'll just, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Does that that relies on it not being completely remineralized? What if, well, even trace amounts of radioactive carbon? We might as well have this discussion on SPL. We're discussing the, <laughs> the, various, yes, <laughs> the various ways we might be able to date the whale skull. And we're thinking about radiocarbon, um, but we don't know whether 
what's in there is original carbon or has been remineralized. Um, I think if it was, it depends how much, you, you, if you could isolate what you knew was original carbon, yeah. then you could do it. If, the question is how to do that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you could look at a kind of thin section of it because I think you could probably distinguish between original kind of organic or biological carbon deposition versus uh, you know Remineral. secondary deposition. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think it would have to do with like, like distance from the center of the bone? I feel like you'd be most likely to find in the yeah, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever it is densest and thickest. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and I, it, I don't know if that's the middle. It might be that there's like a, a high porosity region through the true, center of it true. or something. But, you know, you could kind of follow where manganese is deposited because in all the yeah. rocks I see, you know, manganese crust and then you see some manganese in the rock in the pore spaces and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. I wonder if there's another like radioisotope you could use to date this well maybe you couldn't like you wouldn't get like you could get a bracket right like because yeah could, you could see when it so you know the ma most straightforward would be to look at the amount of manganese on the outside and you know something about the rate that it is deposited so you take the thickest part of that and say you know it's a millimeter per million years but yeah. you're you're uh, kind of uncertainty on that is probably 500,000 years. So that's not a huge help, but yeah. you could say, oh, well, it, it's more than a million or less than a million or something like that. I'm curious, like, I want to know, like, what it was and when exactly it was here. Also, is there any chance that it wasn't originally in this area? Like, could it have moved at all do you think i don't think so that's like well it is yeah also the crust yeah but it's it's just too large to have been carried, carried. I'm actually well yeah so when whales die they tend to sink pretty much down to the bottom right and they yeah. and nautilus has looked at whale falls before um and i just don't think those things are are moving once they get mm -hmm. in the deep ocean they're okay. just too heavy to be carried by any currents or anything Hmm. We have chat tuning in to your questions. The famous whale fall a few years ago had the bones being eaten by Ocidax worms, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Would a surviving whale bone be a sign that a thousand years ago those worms were in there in this region? I actually think that this part of the skeleton might not be as tasty for the worms for uh -huh. some reason you know like i because they nautilus has found one of these before so there's some something that suggests that this is better preserved than other parts of the whale and uh and so but that would be another great thing to do would be to look for fossil evidence of you know worm burrows in this and mm -hmm. and so we could uh x-ray you know, CT scan it basically, and uh, and look for, because th there you would see some structures related to the burrows. You might see mineralization on the burrows that's different right. than the stuff around it. You, in the CT scan, you're basically looking at differences in the density of the material, basically how fast the, the x-rays go through it. And, uh, and you can easily kind of pick out different mineral phases. So could this also tell us about the like like changes in the environment at the time uh or i guess through the history of it being there in the so like in the sense that some kind of ancient bones can be used to tell you like what the critter was eating you know in terms of stable isotopes and stuff like that mm -hmm. or 
water temperatures or things. It's probably yeah. not a great tool for that because it's an organism that moves around yeah, and it's right. something we have one of rather than like a, a thousand of, of in order yeah. to kind of see signal through the noise. But uh, I think I think what the commenter said about looking at what the environment was for the uh, critters that would eat a dead whale at the time, that might be preserved pretty well in this. Mm. Okay. And how common are they? Yeah. Well, Seriously. so Nautilus has found two now on 20 some cruises out in this area. And considering how small of an area that Nautilus or Hercules actually sees when it's on the seafloor, I'd have to guess they're pretty common or Hercules is was incredibly lucky to find right. two of them. I mean, that we visited, uh, I don't know, maybe a 10,000th or a 100,000th of the seafloor out here and have found two. That's pretty incredible. Wow. Well, hopefully we'll get to see you on this cruise. That would be really cool. Another one? Yeah. yeah I mean, be because really it was horrible. not found on our watch, I'm very jealous, and we gotta yeah. we gotta step it up. We gotta step we're it just, up. We're just we're just looking we're for whale bones cool. all day, every day. <laughs> if we can manifest burgers, we can manifest. Yes, <laughs> yes. Whale bones. I'm working on whale shark and tacos. Those are my top priorities right just now. To clarify, those are two different things. We don't want whale shark tacos. <laughs> we don't have no uh, those interest are, in those. Those are two different things. Unrelated. Now we need a shanty for whale falls. <laughs> whale falls shanty. We're still working on the whale shark the whale. <laughs> shanty. <laughs> whale shark shanty. That has a nice ring to it. Do you think we'd be more successful if I did my Sean Connery for the whole watch? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if Wait, you what? Did your what? Nothing. <laughs> you can do an impression of <laughs> Sean Connery? Uh, Welcome according to the sea floor. According to <laughs> TJ, no. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> It's okay, Adam. I've also thought that I can do a Sean Connery impression. Can TJ <laughs> I've also do been a told. Sean Connery impression? Can oh. you, TJ? No, he just knows it when he hears it. Oh. And he didn't hear it. <laughs> I think the, the Irish accent is just uh, embedded in me. <laughs> Wait, are we going to hear the impression or no? Nope. No? Aw. Nope. It's a hard no. <laughs> it's a hard no. I kind of do, I do a little evaluation. I kind of look up at Samantha, <laughs> see, see which way if the I'm, head's If I'm staring going. back at you. <laughs> and then I, then I decide what to say. <laughs> yeah. Is she laughing? Is she shaking her head? Or is she just silently <laughs> glaring? <laughs> yeah. There's a, a, a fourth one, which is just the dejected, like head down. <laughs> Not even like, looking oh. at you directly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I'm curious to hear the impression. <laughs> that might be a, a kind of off, off mic kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> Adam, can you go off SPL for a, second? <laughs> no. a quick minute? No. Uh, look at that. My my mute button is stuck. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we're seeing some uh, pla like midwater rocks. That <laughs> is that a rock? Yeah. <laughs> Getting a hint of the C4. <laughs> your echolocation <laughs> yeah. skills. Your echolocation yeah, skills. Yeah, what does your echolocation say, <laughs> Virgin King? We did pass through quite a lot of midwater organisms. Yeah, a lot yeah, of jellies and stuff. We have. Anyway, Adam, you got to keep it PG because my mom is listening. Hey, <laughs> what's up, <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Wishnack? Hi, Mom. <laughs> Your daughter's super cool. <laughs> we love her. Okay, a little, a little too much. Uh, what else? Really didn't. Do you find that she complains a lot at home? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh. 
I'm pretty sure she. Is she think she's watching when we're going through the water column. She well, when we started the watch, yeah. Yeah, she probably just <coughs> wants to hear you, your voice, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I complain a lot? No, I'm I was <laughs> just, no, I was just trying to make something up. Only when I when I ask for a zoom when you're trying to get to the next waypoint. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I suggested that's not, that we that's create more true. waypoints. She for you. totally accepts our. Uh, well, change in plans. You know? I, yeah, actually, you don't really complain. There's usually just a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep yeah, those quiet. Yeah. <laughs> How many waypoints do we have today, Samantha? That's a great question. Let's find out together. <laughs> <laughs> this has turned into a kid show. <laughs> Let's count them up together. <laughs> One waypoint. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> Two waypoints. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five. Wow. We can count that high. Um, I guess. Yeah, I'm curious. Why only five? We our original plan had more like nine because we were zigzagging to try and stay within you know the yeah. ship limitations, but the wet the wind is so has died down enough that I think we'll have no problem. All right, let's, let's hear the counting of our waypoints in all the different languages we have represented wow. on this watch. It's a good exercise. Okay. Paola. <laughs> I just saw Adam on the Paola. Paola. Okay. Tenemos waypoint uno, waypoint dos, it's 100 million years old or whatever it was. So we could get like these like larger scale estimates, which might be more accurate, but have a like wider range. And then we could also look at like finer scale estimates, but this there would be like a lot more error, right? Yeah, the, the it'd be more accurate, but you might not know exactly what you're measuring, whereas the larger range is less accurate, but you're pretty confident in it. Yeah. So, precision versus accuracy. Yeah. And what about like, like could we look at like other things surrounding the whalebone? Like would that tell us anything? Not, I don't think in this case, because it's on the surface. <laughs> Yeah, so on the surface, oh. only it, it doesn't give you a, a bottom to the age mm. or a top, really, because it could, could have <laughs> landed on the surface at any time. The surface okay. has, yeah. has been really stable for millions of years, so it, uh, it doesn't help you hone it in. Now, if it was, there's, you know, sometimes you can find burnt carbon beneath the lava flow or you find fossils within kind of a sedimentary package and you yeah can that would be a lot more helpful that would be because then you have something on top and something on the bottom yeah yeah interesting so maybe to give folks watching a little insight to life on the ship I can tell them that right now I have to go get my clothes out of the dryer. <laughs> there are laundry <laughs> facilities on the ship. And what language? <laughs> what and language are there? I don't really want to leave my stuff in there. Oh, I guess someone could take it out, but like you don't want to leave it for other people who, because there's not many washers and there's right, a lot of people. Right. Um, yeah, I'll leave it in there. <laughs> And and what language is the are the settings in? Uh, they're in pictographs, maybe hieroglyphics and yeah. Arabic, yeah. and uh, there it's confusing because of the a and English letters. So there's something that says three H, which I interpreted as three, three hours. 
and that is the yeah. sh shortest Same. time period. Oh. There's another setting for, goes all the way to 12 H. No, those yeah. H's are for delays. That's what I told But there is, there's a no three hour zero H. delay? No, that's because you, you just don't select anything. But there was a light on next to three. Why would you want to delay it your laundry that by That means it hasn't been selected. Hours. Uh, I thought it I'm automatically sure it was just 60 not, but minutes. But there's also different pictures next to those. Those are delays. My laundry was in there for four hours the other what? day. What? <laughs> yeah, and you can't really? like stop it. My laundry really. finished in about an hour, so well, I don't know. Well, that's what you said. Yeah, yeah. The number one setting? I the did number the one. Four hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What do you call to strain in the clothes out? The the iron? 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 Yeah, we don't have that, so if you want your clothes, you might want to get them. Yeah, you might want to go get your clothes. We don't have an iron to iron. Are they coming out? from the washer? I or don't the dryer? really iron my clothes <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm I kind of go for, for like the wash them, put them in the laundry basket, keep them in the laundry basket. Are you saying that people don't come and iron your clothes for you in your cabin? They do that for me every day. They they lay out they an outfit. Do? Yeah, they iron it. They lay it out. Wow. I knew you I was in a quad. <laughs> right after they brush your teeth for you. Oh, <laughs> that <laughs> is a little that too. frustrating. <laughs> They're aggressive with the brush. I, yeah. Well, they make <laughs> towel, towel animals sometimes. <laughs> towel. Towel. <laughs> do they do a whale shark with the towel? A double <laughs> octopus. Adam's up in the high rent district, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know what happens up there. They could iron your clothes. Well, really? <laughs> I know that Jose has made towel animals before. Oh, really? What? He hasn't towel animaled me yet. Really? Unless it's Angelica uh, made awesome towel animals. <laughs> wow, box, really? Box jelly, I think, is what he was going <laughs> for. People are washing your towels. <laughs> I joined the boat years ago, and uh, I asked for the where the laundry was. I was told, grab a bag, tie a knot, Drag it behind the, <laughs> drag it behind the vessel. Oh no, for real? <laughs> for really? They were messing with you. No, that was if you wanted no. your, if you wanted your clothes washed. What? What? Uh, uh, no, really? Put them in a wash bag and tow it behind the vessel when you were steaming. And make sure that knot is good, or else you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have, have no clothes. clothes. Was yeah. it Wait, TJ? Salty? Really? I <laughs> genuinely not. Uh, that's like years for real? Ago. Yeah, I'm years really ago. I'm really gullible, so. Uh, no, no, years ago. No, oh. no, no. There was no washing I'm machines on that boat. Wow. Uh, I got wow. some. I hope nobody I lost some, their clothes. I got some strange looks when I asked as well. <laughs> that must funny. have been really like stiff. What if you wanted? Uh, there, were, there were short trips. There were only 14-day trips, so you know it wasn't. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm glad you didn't ask where you could take a bath. <laughs> They're like a top in this bag. <laughs> up forward, up, in this up, bag. Up, up forward in the forecastle with, with four four IBCs, uh, big you know the big cubes, uh -huh. four IBCs uh, full of water. And it wasn't there was no heated water. It was just four IBCs up forward in the forecastle, draining oh down, gravity God. fed. What's oh an IBC? Uh, you know the big uh, big cubed. Um, Keep saying big cubes, but big it doesn't. <laughs> like it's a, it's you see them on construction thinner. sites, like oh, the water. big yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Wait. <laughs> yeah, some of the other That's ships use that for a hot tub. <laughs> I see. A thermal recovery unit. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they pipe some of the, the heated water from the engine room up there. Waste, waste heated water. I've been full, sir. I've been on boats that have had saunas and swimming pools and, and everything. Swimming pools? Wow. Yeah. Uh, infinity pools. What? Commercial vessels, yeah. No, really? Cool. We Sauna, yeah, there's a lot of ships that, that get built in, like, Norway and stuff that have saunas in them, but... Uh, wow. Yeah, no, I've never seen a swimming in. pool. That's cool. Yeah. Power, uh, uh, for powered swimming, power pumps on them. Basketball courts. Yeah. Chat is asking, how long until we reach the bottom? Thanks. We have a lot of our viewers who are just tuning in. Not soon enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 40, 45 minutes? Uh, 50? Half hour. Half hour, Half says hour. Uh, okay. Robert. Says the bus driver. <laughs> Hong Kong. I'm 
unless he slows down to get donuts on the way. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that word. Don't say donuts. that word. Why, why are you saying Because we're not going to have donuts for a long time. I can live without donuts. Really? Yeah. I can't. I mean, I like the idea of donuts, but every time I eat one, I'm like, oh. You're not I having the right donuts, so They have those pastry things. Said no one ever. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> really? Donuts? Yeah. Ugh. Uh. Clean living, you know? Why not munch <laughs> on some cabbage or broccoli? Cabbage. <laughs> yep. It's not fennel. Isn't it about time you went and got your laundry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He comes back and the door's locked to the van. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, I'm here. So were leaks okay? What? Leaks. Yeah. I thought you were asking about if there were any leaks on. Yeah, the me too. No, no, no. The leak detector. It's like a bad word. Yeah, I like leaks. Leaks are great. Leaks, leaks but they potato soup. They don't taste like licorice. You don't like licorice? <laughs> nah, not particularly. Yeah. Do you eat them raw, the leeks? No, I would not eat raw leeks. Would you? I, I'm just learning about this. Oh. <laughs> I have no clue. They're like big, they look like big green onions, but they're really like fibrous so yeah. you have to cook them to get them mm. soft oh. very flavorful but not potato leek soup yeah yeah that yeah. sounds yeah. good actually oh, it's, bacon it's, potato it's good. Leek. Good stuff. the thing about leeks is they have a lot of sand in them what? Uh, True. And so you have oh. to you have to chop them up uh, and oh. separate them uh, out separate the layers out and rinse them really well yeah, um, oh. before chopping them <laughs> Dave, have you ever done like a cooking show? Because I feel like yeah, you've got the right yeah, like, I, or a workshop. <laughs> the right vibe. I yeah. love to cook. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I've got my kitchen uh, at the house in Oregon just about set up the way I like it. Nice. And, yeah, we put in a kitchen island, uh, and uh, yeah. I feel like you've got the right voice for the. Like, going like yeah, you do. Yeah. Kind of like a Bob Ross kind of style. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, you yeah. didn't chop this yeah. the right way? That's okay. We're yeah. making happy little... <laughs> happy little trees. Happy little yeah, cute little happy little creek tomatoes. in the air. There's yeah. just uh, happy little accidents. <laughs> well, and I got the tip of my finger there. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> That's a lot of flavor in your dish. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, oh, word of the day. Word of, Word of the, the day. day. Word of the day. Ding, 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 ding. I was disappointed with Merriam Webster for yesterday's <laughs> Word of the Day. I don't think today's Word of the Day is Word of the Day. <laughs> what was it? You're going to fight Merriam Webster. Oh, no way. Oh, what? This is a great word for today. Yeah. What is uh, it? Flavido. Flavido. All right, let's take a Flavido. guess at this. I'm going to say a type of dance. <laughs> mm, okay. Not quite. Okay. Uh, Flavido. Uh, Never heard this word in all my days. Me either. I know what it is, but I'd be you, Yeah, you. I've read it. <laughs> you know what so it much is? knowledge. Oh. Okay. Uh, can you. F L A V E D O? Yeah. Flavido. Fla if you break it into parts. Flav. Flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, the flavor of the Edo region of Japan. <laughs> the Japanese flavor. No. That's what I'm going with. Final so answer. The colored <laughs> outer layer of the rind of a citrus fruit. No, that's not a word. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Really? Flavido. Flavido. Well, you say Flavido. I say Flavetto. <laughs> I feel like you're supposed to say flavado. <laughs> flavado. Huh. All right. Aww, Miriam that's Webster. A baby Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh my god, there's vocabulary quizzes. Okay. Exiting out of this. Very easily distracted here. Have you ever seen that on a menu, the flavito? 
Flavito's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I go to the bar and ask for a gin, I'm going to yeah. say I want some... A, a gin with Flavido. <laughs> I think they would ask you to leave. I'm yeah. a, bamboozled, yeah. I'm a <laughs> bamboozled bartender. And chat says, zest is much easier to say, though. Yeah. Yeah, zest. and like, less annoying. Less yeah. pretentious. Less pretentious. <laughs> Flavido. So we've had Flavido, Bauer, Interpolate. Interpolate. We had. Uh, What's the other? What are other? Gamut. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Tele. Oh, telegenic. Telegenic. What's everyone's favorite? Of Mine the was Gamut. One we could use. Uh, Deliverous. What's that? Containing a lot of stars, so some of these corals are stelliferous. Uh, <laughs> stelliferous. That's pretty cool word. That's a good name. Or a good word. And then chat says, the Flavido-like layer of ferromanganese crust on the whale skull added massive flavor to the expedition. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was great. Nice. That was the right use of that word. How many days till your birthday now? Oh, um, so which time zone are we using? <laughs> Our, time. Our time, local. Our time? Uh, two days. Two days. <laughs> so yes. Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. 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 How do they know to make the cake? I think someone has to tell them. Has someone told them? Uh, At the, the beginning of Cruz's expedition leader usually gets a list. Oh, okay. The only way they could possibly know would be if they had your passport. Uh, this. Oh, wait. That's where the list comes from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uranium eventually decays to lead. Yep. What? Uranium eventually decays to lead is what you said, yep. Dave? Which, yep. which lead isotope, though? 206? Uh, 206. So how many years does it have to pass for a birthday to repeat the day? Like, I haven't had a Tuesday birthday in a long time. Seven, unless Seven. there's a leap year. Oh. oh, he's right on the ball. Look at that delta. OK, hold on. I have an addition. Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, chat says happy we'll early birthday, Paula. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Do I have um, the free drawing board privilege during that day? That would be my greatest. You want a lot of pokes? <laughs> Telestrated pokes? I want one yeah, poke. Yeah, we can trade seeds. Paula <laughs> hasn't even had one single poke. Yes. That would be the greatest gift. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, that the would be a, a gift. I don't know about the greatest. For that day, at least. For that day. All right. Yes. Yeah, you poke away all day. <laughs> Give her the fake stylus. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
what's the greatest gift have you ever received on a birthday? That's a great question. <sighs> yeah, that is a great question. Hmm. Interestingly, I don't really care about gifts anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want to be with family and kind of buy my own gifts as I need them. It's hmm. a bit warm. What about you? What's the greatest gift you ever received? Besides Telestrator. I don't know. I just made that random question, but I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the experience for me, too. One of my best birthdays, we were all night on the beach. Mm -hmm. I got a wow. lot of friends. That's so fun. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really fun. I like that. I have cheesecake instead of birthday cake every year, so. I love that. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. That is great. I'm, I'm impressed by that one, Jules. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't make it. <laughs> Even better. Somebody else makes you, you cake. Can't, you can't make your own birthday cake. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Adam on uh, spending time with family and friends. But I will say that my boyfriend after college got me tickets to a monster truck rally, and he didn't even know that that's actually what I really wanted to do. Because uh, <laughs> I kept seeing signs for it around Chicago, and I was like, I want to go to this monster truck rally. Uh, and somehow kind of he amazing. knew. Yeah, it was, it was an experience. Wow. <laughs> you wanted to do that? I really wanted wow. to do it, but I hadn't told anyone. <laughs> and it was a Valentine's Day gift, and I was like, that's very, how did he know? <laughs> I think at a certain, at this point in my life, we just get each other like the big purchases that we need, like, like a fridge. And, yeah, and call it a <laughs> gift. Actually, I did give my wife a fridge for her birthday a couple years ago. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I like like the like handmade things. I like the the smaller things that have more meaning. Yeah. My sister like made me a, a painting that I really love. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's really thoughtful. Mm. Hey, along those lines, I was talking to my, uh, my video crew and I said, so you guys put anything up on the art wall? And they went, what art wall? Oh, you so told them about it? <laughs> the, other, the other watches are lame. Uh, <laughs> one watch has definitely been contributing. <coughs> oh, good. And Dave, now that you say that, I don't think we've had any contributions from uh, video during the H12 yet, actually. Uh, I have a contribution. Yeah. Let me uh, send some post-it notes down. I, actually, I, I did put something on the art wall last night. Did you really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You have to look for it. But Control van actually, setup I screens. Yeah, <laughs> I have to do my due diligence, wall. too, from social media. So if you look up on the little whiteboard... On the little whiteboard. On the little whiteboard. Well, I see the yeah. fish. Yeah, I, I put that up there. But you didn't make the fish. I put it on the art wall. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it, but I, I put it on the art wall. So I was not clear on how this works. I was cleaning up the van, and I found the little origami fish thing, and I put it on the art wall because I thought it was Hold nice. On. I'm the fish found you. Post yeah, the fish found coming. me. Exactly right. It called to me. It called to And, uh said that it had to be preserved and not just chucked in the bin. So, there you go, I'm, I'm in. No, uh, no, sorry, we, we, we don't write. We Give him a C pen. We have, uh, a pen. We have stone tablets. I have a pen here somewhere. So, back home? They're gonna be making NFTs over at that station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an artist. You can get, get an AI to generate something for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to Dan. We'll 3D print something. There you go. Ooh. Perfect. Back home, there's this cake that it's really spongy. It's called Tres Leches. I don't See know it? if oh. yes. that's my favorite cake. Yes. Okay. So good. Are we talking about favorite cakes now? Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm always going to go for red velvet. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Red velvet. Yeah. That's that's my son, that's my son's favorite. Yeah. Really? Red, red yes. Velvet, yeah. Yes. Ah. I made a cake for a kid's birthday a few years back that was a uh, like a takeoff on a Hostess cupcake. So it was two layers of chocolate cake Ooh, with a marshmallow wow. buttercream in the middle and oh. a chocolate ganache on the top. That was epic. Wow. Did you do the white squiggle on top too? I did. Nice. <laughs> I could, I kind of forgot what it looked like though, so I don't think I did the like. It's like a loop de loop thing, right? Right. Yeah. 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 That sounds amazing. I'm not saying this just because my mom is watching, but actually I don't think she is anymore. But uh, there's a fruit gâteau recipe that's this famous, or famous, kind of famous now, family recipe, and it's like a whipped cream fruit cake. Um, not fruit cake, but it's whipped cream cake how do I explain with fruit this? on it. Trifle. It's it's like a f no, it's like a frozen. It's like you mix heavy whipping cream with a type of fruit, mango, strawberries, whatever you want. Oh. Um, and then freeze that on a crust of almonds, crushed almonds, and vanilla wafers. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That gets frozen, good. and it is so good. Is that the cream? Amazing whipped when you yeah it? i mean yes yeah okay you make like a big whip so it's yeah, yeah. it's like so light it's light yeah okay. but it's also frozen and ice creamy and cool yeah you can use like you know seasonal fruit really fresh delicious wow it's a very old recipe like 50s 60s kind probably yellow mold kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially with the vanilla wafers <laughs> on the crust yeah has to be black forest gato Oh, oh, that's good. That that is is key so good. And pie is key lime pie. Oh, that's my wife's favorite. Nice. Key lime, yeah. All right, what's going on here? Well, we're just talking about desserts, Robert. Don't go Are down. You? Huh? <laughs> you're not going down? Oh, your pressure is dropping too, yeah. Yeah. What is going on with that? Well, there was speculation of a, a relief valve that's uh, not doing its job right. Doing its job right, yeah. It's interesting. It seems to be like a depth-related phenomenon. Yeah, because we were going to about 2,400 yeah. last time. Yeah, now it's too. doing it. Doing that weirdness. What's the uh, estimated time to the bottom? Difficult point to make that estimate because our vertical velocity is probably suffering Changing, a little bit right yeah. now. Okay. It's like when you see the sticker on the back of the bus that says this vehicle may stop <laughs> at any time. <laughs> But we've got about 300 meters, uh, 250 meters. Yeah, it's just doing its own. I don't like it. it makes me look bad. Okay. 
starting to pick up scatter on the sonar. That looks like just noise. That's al altimeter noise. See, now we're now we're hauling the mail. It's just jumping. Yeah. See, and then it gets hung up. Yeah. Like just give it a little bit of forward. Not a fan. Apparently, you can swim with basking sharks too. Wow. The north. So, with orcas and basking sharks. Adam, are your kids interested in your work? Do they get to like see what you do? Uh, yeah, they're somewhat interested. Um, I did send a bunch of highlight photos back so they could take a look. And uh, yeah, they're kind of interested, but they, you know, don't like it when I leave for a month, kind of thing. Right. They're more interested, not more interested, but I used to go into their classrooms a lot to, you know, <laughs> talk about what I, what really? I Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. But uh, middle school and high school, they don't, <laughs> they don't want to <laughs> see you as much. <laughs> How much, like, like, educational outreach do you do? Uh, or, like, what type, I guess? Well, so, you know, I, I would say I leave the education and outreach to the professional science communicators, and then yeah. I bop in when I can help them gotcha. with something. Okay. Cool. Um, and so, you know, speaking with classes, you know, like the interactions here, but right, other things right. in terms of professional development for teachers and, and whatever, and I probably focus more on the education training of like graduate students and things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll write stuff for popular press and and all that kind of stuff. I try and do it as much as I can, but I don't really have a social media presence, which mm -hmm. some people do, is that's their outlet for right. communication. Um, I have all the accounts, but I don't really post very often. Yeah.
And Annie, you said that you work at a local high school. Mm -hmm. What yes, is that like? A very, uh, well, I'm going on my second year now. Um, so very interesting, definitely a different generation. Um, but I love how more, there's more opportunities. Like when I was a couple of years ago, marine science wasn't even a thing. Um, it wasn't its own separate class, but now yeah. it's actually a class in our local high schools and it's being taught as a higher science, which I'm, yeah, so it's, it's really awesome. great. Yeah, and the kids are, the kids are amazing, are amazing. I miss them. They're very outspoken. Um, of course, social media is a huge thing. So they're all over online. One thing can be shared in the whole island. Yeah. Knows. So if you go viral, <laughs> all of American Samoa knows your business. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> even if you're, if you're new to the island and you go out um, with the locals, like if I take you out, like, yeah. A lot of people will, will hear, oh, that's right, I heard about you, and Ooh. you don't even know them. Yeah. Wow. I'm s yeah, I'm serious. That's wild. Yeah, so it's, it's really great. Um, our local high schools have um, come a long way, like, with its ed education, and they're offering a lot more, so. What do the students that you're interacting with, what do they think they want to do for work? Oh, wow. That's a good question. So based on my conversations a lot of them want to um go into it before they want to go into like being a lawyer being a business which is usually the typical um career paths that i always we always hear about um but now a lot of them want to go into like electrical engineering construction Ooh, wow. even now um marine science because a lot of students they said oh i'll miss i'm you know, I heard about the class, but I didn't want to take it because it's so intimidating. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so they were really scared to take the course. But after oh. taking the, the marine science and getting a taste of what basalt is, like yeah. plate tectonics, um, they get so hyped up mm -hmm. that they, they, they would <laughs> say, after I graduate, I'm going to pursue this. Um, That's amazing. In the higher wow. level. Yeah, so uh, I'm happy that a lot of students are going into like electrical engineering construction because that's that's actually what's really needed mm -hmm. yeah um, right yeah so definitely it sounds like a very rewarding job to have yeah even like being a biochemist i mean chemistry like those are all careers that i'm happy the students are thinking of pursuing it's like out of the box for us so yeah what is the How's the internet connectivity <laughs> on the island? Very island. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> As you would expect. Yeah, very, very island. Like when the, when a when a strong when we get strong winds, expect to talk to each other. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the the the, the Wi-Fi, the internet access. It's it's good. It's very island. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh. I'm amazed by it, the Wi-Fi we have on this ship. Uh, yeah, I am too. I am too. Robert, you got an update on how things are going up there? Uh, we're getting there. All right. I have to, I have to kind of nurse the hydraulics a bit here. Okay. So I had a question on chat, like about your still shot, your still cam. Oh, yeah. Is that for public or internal? Public. Um, public. 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 Yeah. This be posted on the Okeanos. The no. Now I it it back. It'll be. Uh, it'll make its way to um, we'll NCEI, the okay. National ah, okay. Center for okay. Environmental Information, sometime. Maybe MGDS, the Marine Geoscience Data System, as well. I'm not sure what gets transferred to to that, but. Uh, all the data we collect, you know, digital data and physical samples are, will be publicly available just once we process all the data and yeah. get right. it into repositories. The still cam is also what we use for a lot of our social media. Oh, as I oh, look and okay. filter still cam photos in the background here, but <laughs> yeah. So That's stay tuned cool. to all the social channels, all six. So Adam, yes. it might be a okay, repeat thank you. of the last two times. Okay. Because there's a big... If you look how far back oh, yeah, Atlanta is from the ship, sort of in that same direction. 
based on all the other things I'm seeing. Current. Yeah. All right, well, the, the spot we're landing is kind of a narrow channel. Uh, which has a might have the possibility of you know focusing the current, so we'll have to take a look. Or it might be a nice place to hide. Not sure. Yeah. So I guess they had to move a bit yesterday. It was yesterday, whenever that was, when we had the super strong current and I wasn't getting anywhere, and then the next watch took over and and had to. They ended up in trail mode. Had to get Did they? Yeah, they got towed 200 meters. To get to our spot? Oh. Yeah. It was just that particular spot. Just, just too much current there. Yeah. Three beams. Getting close. Four beams. Adam, can you tell how far we are? <laughs> try backing up and see what happens. You're muted. 84.3 <laughs> meters. <laughs> backing up. Great. I am able to back up, so it looks like we don't have the super duper current. Oh, that's good. Great. But Atalanta is still so stretched out from the yeah. ship. Way back there. You want to move now or move when we get down there? Uh, I think we'll be okay. Okay. Samantha, what are the divisions on the nav screen? 10 meters. 10 meters, okay. And the ship is over the launch point? ship More or less. is no we're oh, um, oh i see because we, we track forward when yeah, we yeah, do good. the launch so we are about 100 meters off that's good yeah okay and this will be a good angle actually to yeah make our move to waypoint two So what are we expecting to see? Are we expecting to see like about the same species on substrate as the previous dive? I think substrate will look pretty similar to us, but species, we've moved, uh, I don't know how many miles from our last three dive area where we did the last three dives. Right, so a right. uh, whole new seamount, so we could see different species colonizing it. It says 200 nm. I'm not. 200, yeah, nautical miles. Nautical miles. So when we're not diving, uh, the ship is still working. It's mapping the seafloor using a, a multi-beam sonar and filling in 
gaps in this area. The area we're diving right now, we did not have any kind of uh, mapping data. So we right. collected that data and now and planned our dive on top of that. So all the mapping, all of this is available online. Oh, there's right. the seafloor. Yes, Ooh. eventually it all it will, will be available online. Awesome. Thank you. On bottom. Wait, you got C4? We got C4. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go. Uh, Looks like soft sediment. Yeah. Is that something there, or is that just a... And we have reached the bottom, chat. This thing? I think yeah. that's been in the I don't think that's a shallower there. than yeah. we were anticipating. Do you have any questions? Please send them in. Wow. Yeah. Okay to reset? Yeah. You're there. You're just, your little icon isn't there. Not there. You're... I'm just not there. There. But I'm not there. There you are. What are we looking to collect? What are we looking to collect? Well, yeah. In terms of rocks or biology? Um, everything. Okay. Right. Uh, we well, under. I'd like to get a rocks from various depths along our transect here, and then uh, for biology, whatever is the dominant morphotype, as we like to say, and anything totally unusual. First time seeing this spot of seafloor by any humans in the existence of humanity. That's always uh, exciting. Keep the delta up because I'm going under so here. Yep. I want to make sure we capture what's representative for the area, both digitally in, in imagery and whatnot, and in physical samples as well. Because much of what we see and what we need to know, we can't learn just from pictures. Right. I wonder if any of the like organic matter from the marine snow is captured in um, in the eDNA. Or, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess it so. That's why we take the the blank sample to account for that like background, okay. right? Yeah, it might be what clogs up the filter too. Oh, because of this. yeah, true. And what do they do with the push cores? What are they looking for? Uh, people, different people looking for different things. So some people want to find the organisms living in the sediment. Uh, another group is looking for otoliths or fish ear bones. 
and teeth. Um, as a volcanologist, I might look in the sediment for volcanic ash that's being transported from either through the air or from submarine eruptions. Um, probably not much done in the way of paleoceanography because the cores yeah. are pretty short. Okay. Uh, and there was something special about the uh, otoliths? Otoliths? Yeah, otoliths are, uh, you can, you can use them to, you can date them and look right, at okay. ocean chemistry from the composition of the otolith. And they are very well preserved. Oh, so okay. Is that why we use those? Because yeah. they're well preserved? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's really interesting. Zoom in, Dave. Get a hair closer, Bob. A hair closer. A little bit closer. Fill the frame a little bit more. That's good. That'll work. There. Tilt up just a little bit. There we go. You got it. Okay, we're gonna do a black balance first. Okay, white balance procedure done. Thank you. I'm going to reset the DVL again, too. Show on the road. Let's go somewhere. All right. Awesome. Oh, yeah. To waypoint two. <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do one four zero. Bridge nav. Let's do uh, three zero meters. One four zero, please. Let's do 0 0.3 knots, please. I'll zoom over this uh, sandy plain. You know, the other thing that might be worth checking is whether our slurp is working. Oh, yeah. Slurp check. So we don't end up setting up for something and then finding it doesn't work. kind of set down, make a little dust. We'll turn it on and see if we get dust in the bucket. Perfect. 
DJ, you, oh, he's doing numbers. He's a number guy. T two seconds. I'll be Are with we this. going to use a slurp um, jar for the checking? No, we're on the flush one, so it, it won't. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Paula, can you get your uh, microphone a little closer to your mouth? Yes. Thank Here you. we go. Can you get it inside? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that way you'll hear me <laughs> in a normal volume. If it's scraping the roof of your mouth, you know you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you got her? Are you All right, numbers in. Okay, so we're gonna go get ready in the slurp there. Yeah, we're just gonna make a little dust and see what feet. See uh, it in the flush jar. Open ten percent. Let me make a little dust. Adam, what's up with that lonely rock out in the middle of nowhere? Right? <laughs> it's almost begging yeah, to be sent. How did it get there? Right? That's a great question. Pick me, pick me. Yeah. So of course, Robert doesn't remember how to stir up stuff. He's been so long thing. avoiding it. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't want to. Huh. You got some in. I don't know what camera that is on the... That's the, the butt cam. Oh. So oh, you can back up a little bit, maybe. Herc doesn't want to. <laughs> Herc's like, I've been yeah. doing this for years. <laughs> I don't want to stir up sand. <gasps> Look at There's this. Some. There we, we go. We changed the shutter speed. Nice. Do a little... Port Manip scouring there. Oh, this is so much better. Wow. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, water, there's definitely circulation there. I have it on 50% now. You see dust going in there? Yeah, something went through there. Maybe we ought to <laughs> we ought to stick like a little rubber ducky in the flush jar. <laughs> see how yeah, it spins. You can around. see the granules yeah, in the flush jar. Yeah, yeah, it. okay. Yeah. I've just reduced down that's uh, five zero percent. There's an ophiroid. Oh, Hello. I should have stopped, by the way. Are you still sucking, TJ? Yeah, eight zero percent now. <laughs> Those are not claws meant for sand pickup. <laughs> Is there a chance because it's on flush that it's uh, it's going in? I'd, I'll reduce the. No, it's, that should be like giving the it max. The yeah. There. In it. Uh, can you uh, maybe zoom in on the, the business end of that thing? There's yeah. definitely more particles in there. Yeah. There is, yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's in there. Yeah, oh, okay. You can see them swirling around. Uh, yeah. Great. It's 100%. Yeah, it's filling up. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I don't 
we don't want to suck up sand. That was the bad thing. It keeps it from rotating. That's what the problem was. It couldn't rotate at anything. Oh. Uh, it wasn't that we couldn't suck. We couldn't line up the jar because you couldn't rotate it. Oh, oh I see. Okay. So, let's see. Sample jar forward. So we shouldn't have sucked up that sand? Well, that was actually <laughs> not it. Oh. Oh, man. This is the problem. Oh, dang. I thought it was a suction issue. So our issue is that the speed of things, hydraulic things, changes with depth. Yeah. So we have to make it kind of spicy uh, <laughs> on the surface to make sure it'll spin on the bottom. Uh -huh. but it's, it's a guess because right. we don't know. Let's leave it on seven. Yeah. Are we ready to move? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Bridge nav. Three zero meters, one four zero, please. Yeah, Adam, if you look in the Atlanta picture, you can see the, the the scattering of those rocks. Actually, there's a like a pattern to it. Well. I don't know a pattern, but there's, there's there's more than one. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, deep sea Stonehenge. Hi. <laughs> well, there's another National Enquirer article. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like the rocks on the, uh, on the salt desert. flats. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. salt yeah. flats with the ro sliding <laughs> rocks. It is yeah. interesting how how they got there. Sometimes, yeah, the like larger particles like those rocks will get uh, will lift up and stay on the surface as the smaller sand particles or sediment particles get moved around. Hmm. It's why you see the manganese nodules kind of ride in the surface of the sediment. Ship move starting. What was the bearing? Uh, one four zero. One four zero. If it please, sir, one four zero. Roger will do. And then we do have a question from chat. Why is the disturbed snow noticeably wider than the undisturbed snow on the surface? I did notice that. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, oh, when we cleared away an area yeah, it was those wider beneath? Yeah. Whoosh, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for that. Is there a bi biology <laughs> answer? Um, my, my best guess is mineralization, like, I was thinking like, more like oxygen content in the sediment, like the stuff in yeah. the sediment might be consuming. Or oxygen. sorry, I meant remineralization by like microbes. Yeah. That could have something to do with it. I'm not really sure. Great question. Good that observation is, that's by a great the chat. Right. Waypoint. <laughs> I know. Uh, Punta de Villa. Punta de Villa. Punta de Villa 1. Punta de Villa 2. Punta de Villa 3. Punta de Villa 4. I don't think that's a translation, but Punta de Villa 5. 
That's awesome. I'm just not trying to think what is waypoint in Samoa. I'm gonna try and translate. Google translate to Spanish. I know, yeah. Let's go, TJ. Voila. Hen, do, tree, kahar, or is Kurig. Get on. Tree? Is that three? Tree. Tree. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm gonna remember that one. That one. Was uh, I was told a joke there last week. Uh, what, uh, trying to remember what was it? Uh, where did all the trees go? Where did, where did the where did the twos and the fours go? They got yeah. lost in the trees. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Sorry, guys. So um, we count down in some one. So it's waypoint Tasi two Lua three Tolu. Four, fa. Five is Lima. Tasi Lua Tolu Fa Lima. Tasi. Lua. Say it one more time. Tasi. 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 Lua. Lua. Tolu. Tolu. Fa. Fa. Lima. Lima. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Me, I'll get back to you with what waypoint am I is spacing out right now. So a waypoint in Spanish in Google Translate is Punta de Punto de ruta. So Punto de ruta. Ruta? Ruta. ruta. Oh. Yeah. Ruta. Which ruta and via ruta. are ruta. synonyms. So yeah, okay. Great. Cool. Adam? Uh, let's see. I could do it in Chinese. Ooh. Oh, I was hoping for. Um, e, er, san, su, shi. E, er. E, er. San, San Su Shi. Oh, okay. What do you got? I got French. Oven. French. Uh, I could do an embarrassing thing. Uh, what? 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 What else we got? Japanese. Japanese. Uh. Ichi ni san sho go. Yeah. Wow. Nice. wow. Ichi ni. Ichi ni. San. San. Sho. Sho. Go. 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 I can do Hindi. Let's uh, do it. What? Ek, ekto teen punch. Uh, no, ekto teen char punch. Ekto, right. ekto teen char punch. Char. Char. Nice. Char. Char. Okay, that's I so lived in cool. India for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> I took German in junior high school. Let's, let's oh, hear it. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. There you go. Nice. <laughs> uh, I can also do Khmer, the Cambodian language. Moi bi bai bum bram. Can you repeat that? Moi pi bun. Wait. Moi pi bun bram. I'm the same one. You said Bri the first time. There was a Bri in there. Yeah, there was. Moi be bun. I think it was Bri Bram. Bram Bri. I've done it too many times. Oh, yeah. Moi be bun Bri Bram. Okay. And then Bram, Moi Bram be Bram Bai. Because you add five plus one, five plus two, oh, five really? plus three. Yeah. Oh, oh. interesting. Top is ten. Stop. Okay. If we go beyond five waypoints, I'm going to lose all my... <laughs> <laughs> just go to five in most languages. And we are at 10.50 meters. On the bottom in 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes. Let's go. However, that is a variable time based on our speed. And a, so I'd say within the next hour. You you looked at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. <laughs> okay. Just I'd say an hour to 90 minutes. <laughs> Just expanding the number. <laughs> Bus driver is going pretty slow here. <laughs> Very cautious driver. <laughs> I 
Uh, how do you say f uh, fish and ocean in your language? Uh, fish and ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Wow. wow. <laughs> so we have pez and oceano. Can you repeat that? Pez. Pez? Yeah. Pes. It's P E C. Z? Yeah. Like Zeta. Oh. Ah. Pez and, and not mar. Mar y and oceano. Okay. Mar oceano. Mar y oceano. I like mar more. Oceano. Okay. Sounds prettier. Uh, Irish is Iesk, I guess Farga. Is is Iesk Iesk for fish and Farga. 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 Ooh, that Farga. Sounds, that's super fun to say. Farga. Farga. Farga is what? Fish? Ocean. 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 Yes. Farga. Farga. Oh, okay. Farga. Um and someone uh fish is Ia? Ipa. 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 I with the um I A I A I E A with a glottal mm -hmm. stop. Oh. Yeah, E A, and then ocean is Sami. Sami. Yeah. Oh. So if you say it's Sami and ocean, but it's Sami Moana, ocean blue, or the oh. blue ocean. Oh, Moana Sammy. is blue in Samoan. Oh, that's cool. beautiful. Nice. Adam and Jules, do you know that you're uh, on TV? So you're you're basically giving language lessons to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> is it like I'm like the, the worst, worst language teacher. <laughs> What would our uh, now it's all what would the name of her <laughs> app be? Uh, oh, hi. Aqualingo. 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 Wait, we can't have the owl. What animal would we have to teach? Um, uh, the siphonophore. Just a squiggly <laughs> line. <laughs> I am learning all about fossil dating. Mm -hmm. What's the latest? Share your findings. Uh, we can determine the marine isotope stage, um, the marine oxygen isotope stages, or oxygen isotope stages, are alternating warm and cool periods in Earth's paleoclimate, deduced from oxygen isotope data derived from deep sea core samples. So core samples. So that that's what we call wiggle matching. Wiggle, so you, matching. wiggle matching. You see the oxygen well, isotope see, ratios go up and down, and then you can match it to a time period. Yeah. Oh, so okay. a single measurement is a, a pretty non-unique solution because it yeah. would intersect that curve in any number of places. Hmm. That's true. Well, they so they combine that with uh, radiocarbon dating, and then. For taxonomic identification, um, they use collagen peptide mass fingerprinting. Oh. Yeah. Peptide How does that work? Mass fingerprinting. Um, I don't know. Let me look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to age this whale. <laughs> you want to date the whale? I want to date the whale. <laughs> Actually, our language app is also a <laughs> fish dating app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's also. <laughs> well, chat says Aqualingo would have a whale shark logo. Ooh, oh yeah, oh. it's a good one. <laughs> I have a catchphrase for the app. There's a lot of fish in the ocean. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> all the way down. All the way down. <laughs> There are fish all the way down. Oh, and Chad, how do you date a fossil? Take. <laughs> Is this like a joke or this a question? I know. Trying to figure that out. Let's go with the scientific explanation, yeah? Yeah, so okay. a lot of fossils are dated by not dating the fossil, but <laughs> dating the stuff around it, right? Uh, so you look at the the rock that it's in, you can use, in fact, the whole geologic time scale in the past was based on matching up fossils in different parts of stratigraphic records. Um, so dating the fossil itself is, uh, is a bit harder. If it's oh. young and still contains original carbon, you can use carbon dating. Um, but we've I feel talked like this is the geologist answer. Yeah. 
What else is there? <laughs> the biologist answer. What's that? Let's hear both. Like Let's hear both. Vibes? <laughs> <laughs> no. What, so what's the biological? I mean, you, you certainly can find a fossil and compare it to known other dated yeah. fossils to, to get its uh, age. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So isotope dating, like radiocarbon. Um, and then we can also like identify it taxonomically um, and figure out like what was living in this area around that time also by comparing it to other records. Um, what else? Collagen peptide mass fingerprinting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I just talked about that. Um, marine isotope stages, oxygen isotope dating. Um, I'm, I really am on this, this isotope dating wave. I feel like that can tell us a lot. Yeah, so radiogenic isotopes are basically like little clocks. And they, uh, you know, the parent isotope decays to the daughter isotope at a known rate. And so we can use that. But you need, there's, for a lot of isotope systems, you need to make some assumptions. Like carbon dating, you kind of need to know what the carbon 13, 14 ratio was, where the animal was living. It's variable around the, the planet and in order to get an accurate date. And other isotope systems, like they, so, uh, Potassium argon, for example, argon is a gas. And so you have to assume that there was no argon in the rock when it formed. And you can kind of assume that because it's a gas and it can and leak away. Um, but there's all of all the isotope or most isotope systems have some uh, assumptions that you have to, to make. In the marine isotope stage, you have That's to true. have a long enough record where you can match it to the the known record, uh, you know that that goes up and down with with time. Well, there's also like with corals, they use like uranium thorium yeah. dating. Yes, which is super hard. Yeah. But yeah. That's right. Yeah. With the assumption that um, like uranium is is taken up by the coral, incorporated into the coral biomass, and not thorium, and then uranium is, and correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Um, is decaying to thorium, Ur right? Uranium, yeah. Uranium has a whole decay series to thorium, and I, gosh, I would have to look it up to see the, all, all the rest of them. But there you have to... Oh, that's a cute little jellyfish. Oh. Uh, you have to oh. assume that there's no exchange with, with seawater in terms of the you know, all, both the parent and the and the daughter, but it works, you know, like uranium series, yeah. series but it's a, it's a super labor intensive mm. process for, for making those measurements. Maybe the answer is that we need both the biological and geological data, or maybe that'll bring us closer to. Yeah, I, I mean, the biological being the, the like matching it to other known fossils. Yeah. Yeah, right, which, as a geologist, I'd argue is geological because at some point you have to use <laughs> some method to know the true date for for the fossil record you're comparing it to. Yeah. But I think that the first order would just be the manganese crust. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it'll ballpark it. Mm -hmm. Or actually, I, you know, maybe the first order would be like the taxonomy, like yeah, this is right. the, like because with the megalodon uh, tooth that we found, we know mm -hmm. the time period that megalodon was right, around, right. and so you know that's, that's one ballpark with the with the manganese crest ballpark yeah. says, oh yeah, it's, it was.